the House Select Committee to examine the qualifications of Representatives Cindy Gamrit and Todd Corser will come to order. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Chairman McBroom. Here. Representative Heisey. Here. Representative Verhulen. Here. Representative LaFontaine. Here. Representative Cherkin. Here. Representative Liberati. Here. Mr. Chair, you have a call. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Uh, at this time, I'll accept a motion to approve the minutes from Wednesday, September 9th. So moved by Vice Chair Heisey. Hearing no objection, the minutes are approved. I want to let members know and uh, members of the public know that uh, the committee has received several um, or maybe even many uh, public comments and under the rules of the committee, comments that are uh, submitted in writing and are relevant to the testimony will be added to the public record. Um, at this time, um, ask uh, Mr. Schwartzel to come forward again, please. Welcome back, Mr. Schwartzel, and I'll remind you that you remain under oath to the committee. There's some additional um, questions that have come in from the committee. Do you wish to speak beforehand or simply move to questions? Speak first. Okay, thank you. Proceed. Um, as I noted at the outset of the committee process, this committee and the House as a whole has the opportunity to engage in a bipartisan partnership as the, matter, as the members consider the qualifications of Rep. Todd Corser and Rep. Cindy Gamrat. Both principals have come before the committee and essentially thrown themselves at the mercy of your feet, or at the feet of your mercy. They've admitted all of the facts and conclusions in the House Business Report. They have admitted the accuracy of all of the evidentiary record, including the emails and audio recordings. In simple terms, they have pled guilty and admitted all of the relevant, necessary facts. Thus, the factual investigation is at an end. As I explained in my oral and written testimony several days ago, it is my recommendation that Representative Corser be expelled immediately and that Representative Gamrat receive a censure with harsh penalties and conditions. Nothing that I have heard during testimony has changed my evaluation of the record evidence. My recommendation is, however, just that, a recommendation. The Select Committee and the House are free to do whatever they see fit in their respective collective judgments. All that is asked of this committee and the House is that members rise above partisan partisanship and look to the good of the institution and the people of Michigan. I'm happy to take questions. Thank you, Mr. Schwartzel. Questions from the committee? Vice Chair Churkin. Good morning, Ms. Schwartz, Mr. Schwartzel. How are you doing today? Good morning. I'm doing well. Uh, I've got four questions for you. They're very simple. You shouldn't take I was doing well. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, will, it shouldn't take you long. Uh, there was a notation in the report, uh, a gentleman named Dan Master. And I, I'm trying to figure out why he was in the report when he wasn't employed by the House at the time of the incident. I believe he came forward and said he had uh, what he thought was relevant evidence. Tim Bolin interviewed him and determined that he had no relevant evidence. And I think from the interview statement, you can see that it, there's nothing relevant there. Um, we're, how much has this investigation cost the taxpayers of the state of Michigan, if you know? I have not tallied that up. I know that uh, a lot of attorneys, uh, in-house attorneys, myself, uh, Hassan, and others have spent uh, countless hours uh, over the last month on it. Um, were exit interviews done on either Ben Graham or Keith Allard or, and or Joshua Klein? I believe so. The termination was handled by the House Business Office and um, as a matter of course, I believe uh, Mark Murray typically does the formal um, uh, exit interview immediately after a termination. Um, I, I believe that's what happened here. I have no reason to think anything different. Did uh, you review the exit interviews? No, no. 
I did not review any exit interview. Okay. Um, my last question is, uh, did you get the breaking scandal email, the flagged email that Todd Corser sent? Did you get that? I received a copy of it. It was not, uh, I think as, as Representative Corser uh, testified yesterday, it was something that was sent out to a few or a certain uh, relatively small number and then it kind of expanded exponentially and it took a couple days I think for me to get it. Um, I got it forwarded several times. Uh, I didn't get the original, let's put it that way. So you never got a hard copy, you got it three times or four times removed then? Correct. I am not on, uh, I'm not an original recipient from Todd Corser's emails. All right. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. Swarzo. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Representative Liberati. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, Mr. Swartzel. Good morning. Um, I, I have to take take issue with just, just a couple of your comments um, where you stated both representatives did admit fully to the report. Unless I got something wrong, when we were uh, questioning uh, Representative Corser, he was not as forthcoming as uh, Representative Gamrat was. Um, about everything in the report. He, uh, he actually stated that he didn't read the entire report because he uh, didn't have time and he was, he was still working on it. It, it. That's what I got out of his testimony. Well, and again, I want to quibble. I, I, I don't mean to quibble about labels, but the full report is the, what I would consider this part. This is what the House Business Office put out as its final report. All of the rest is the record evidence. Now, Representative Corser had the opportunity to review it, and I did note that the House Business Office uh, hours, I believe, are 8.30 to 5, maybe 9 to 5, but I think 8.30 to 5, and I know Tim Bowen will come in at any time that you need his assistance, and um, Representative Corser testified yesterday that his attorney and him were there for about five hours to review. So I do uh, take note that he had at least three and a half other hours that for whatever reason he didn't take advantage of. Okay, I just I, I take issue with stating that he admits to everything in the report. That's, that's I think it's fair to say Rep understand. Representative Gamrat certainly did, and I think the, uh, a, a fair uh, uh, review of Representative Corser's testimony yesterday was that he didn't quibble with it. He didn't have any uh, uh, material or, or um, relevant okay. argument to make. Thank you. Thank you. I got just a couple more, if you would. Um, there's there's something that both of the reps deny, which goes straight to their character, that I've been trying to determine here. That I've been ruled that that may not be uh, germane to to the House Resolution 129, uh, but whether the reps fired uh, Ben Graham and Keith Allard uh, for cause or whether they fired them for retribution. Now I believe that goes direct to their their character and. Uh, bears on our decision whether to expel them or censure them. Um, now, they didn't admit to that. Uh, so I take issue with that. I'm, the fact finding isn't over. I'm still trying to figure that fact out. In, in your statement, when Representative Churkin asked you um, about an exit interview or any interviews, I'd like to point to your, your interview on August 17th. August, uh, item 6 is the question from uh, Tim Bowen, uh, do you have any information or material that is relevant to this? Mr. Chairman, I, I have a point of order on this line of questioning. Um, I think it's already been asked and answered at least twice, to my knowledge, and uh, I, I don't think we have any better witnesses than, than the two reps who came forward, so why are we going I down this old this, road? I believe I it does go to the, to the core question, and I, I'm just, I, I'm trying to ask Mr. Swartzel, about his statement that is in the report. I think that's very I, relevant. I believe I know where you're going with this. Okay, so you asked uh, the Representative, the Representative Churkin, the Representative Churkin, I'm trying to testify, sir. Well, I'm trying Representative to I finish my question. Can I, can I finish my question, Mr. Chair, please? Come to order. Mr. Representative, it's very clear in the rules that what's already been ruled irrelevant remains irrelevant. I am willing to give you a little leeway, but I need you to wrap this question up right now and allow Mr. Schwarzel to answer. Absolutely. Your statement post-termination. Talked with Penn, Ben and Keith along with Tim and Norm. During meeting, the conversation was disjointed. Keith and Ben were upset about the fair and the fact that they were not exposed as hypocrites. I'm asking for your, your opinion about that statement. That's all I'm asking. Sure. 
Representative Cherkin asked about an exit interview. An exit interview is something that is done immediately after the termination. It's done after every termination I'm aware of that's done in the House. Again, I believe it's Mark Murray who does those. After that exit interview, uh, Ben or Keith, I'm not sure which one, asked to talk with Tim, Tim Bolin, Norm Sari, and myself. That I did not consider an exit interview. They had been terminated. They had been, it, had, it was several hours afterwards. Now, I was not even in the house that day. I was actually working from home. I had a sick child, so I called into that, uh, that meeting. And so I, I participated in that on, uh, remotely. And then I described it in my, uh, my statement to Tim Bowen. It was disjointed. They were clearly upset. I mean, I think it's normal. They just got terminated. I don't know anybody that's happy after they get terminated. Um, okay, thank you. Sure. Thank you, Representative. Any further questions for Mr. Schwarzel? Thank you very much for your time on all of this, Mr. Schwarzel. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, the chair recognizes Representative Cherkin. Mr. Chairman, we've heard a lot of testimony. Uh, we've had heard testimony that's been stricken from the record. And I want to renew my motion, House Resolution 137, that uh, Ben Graham and Keith Allard are um, subpoenaed to come in. And I'm going to tell you my reasoning why. When you get in a court of law or a tribunal, and you have the subpoena power to bring somebody in, they take a different outlook if they're sitting in that chair across the way from us looking at us and you ask them questions. Whether or not they take the fifth or not, uh, I don't know what they'll do. I've been, it's been purported that their attorneys have said that they will not answer any questions, but I still want the opportunity to look them in the eye and them to look us in the eye and they're accused and, and ask them the questions point blank. Now, I'm going to go into this because I've been a police officer for 28 years. The last 10, I was a detective. So I put my detective hat on, and I've reached out to Keith Allard. I talked to Keith Allard on the phone this morning. I did not ask him any questions except for one. Would he be willing to come in and testify if he was subpoenaed? And his answer was yes. So once again, I am going to renew my motion to have them, either Keith Allard for sure to come in, but I'd like to have Ben Graham also. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Vice Chair Cherkin. Vice Chair Cherkin, are you making that a motion or are you just making that a request? Uh, no, sir. I'm making a motion to adopt House Resolution 137. All right. I, I'm going to... Hold on, hold on. Okay. The chair rules the previous motion out of order. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I would like to place it before the committee, Resolution 137. Vice Chair Cherkin moves to place Resolution what number? 137. 137 before the committee. Um, Representative Cherkin, I, I have appreciated working with you on this issue, but I'm very troubled by the fact that you've reached out to Mr. Allard, and I want to point out that rule number five says all official communications from the committee shall be made by the chair. It's totally improper to speak with him without his legal counsel. Uh, we have communicated with Mr. Allard and Mr. Graham's legal counsel, both of them adamantly, and I read this into the record yesterday, both of them adamantly deny any suggestion in the House Business Office report or otherwise that they were fired for good cause and contend that they were wrongfully terminated. Our lawyers reached out to their lawyers last week and we were informed that they would not be testifying and that they had fully cooperated with the House Business Office investigation and had provided it with all the relevant information. I'd also like to point out that the accused here Representatives Corser and Gamrat have come forward and admitted to the wrongdoing in the report. 
to issue subpoenas will take further House resources, will further lengthen the time of these hearings and of the duration of the disrepute this House is in as long as this continues. And both of these two individuals that you wish to subpoena have fully cooperated and their attorneys tell us they have nothing more to give. The chair does not see a, a reason to move forward with your resolution and I would encourage members to vote no on taking it up. Yes, you may. Um, Mr. Chair, I can appreciate your position as far as Rule 5. I wasn't in the, it wasn't official when I spoke to him. It was just two people talking. That's Number true. two, this isn't a trial. This is a tribunal. A tribunal of rules. And, and a tribunal is a little bit different. And in the beginning of these proceedings, I did come to you and say, can I speak to anybody individually? Does the rules prohibit that? And unfortunately, you said you would, you would uh, see, but you never got back to me. So I'm, I'm assuming that it was okay to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. I apologize for not getting back to you, but the rules have been available, and you do have legal counsel. Um, you voted to adopt these rules. Um, I need to go at ease at the call of the chair. Representative Cherkin to take up House Resolution 137. The clerk will call the roll. Chairman McBroom. No. Representative Heisey? No. Representative Verhulen? No. Representative LaFontaine? No. Representative Cherkin? Yes. Representative Liberati? Yes. Mr. Chair, you have two yes votes and four nay votes. The motion fails. All right, members of the committee, at this point, I would appreciate having the opportunity to have a frank and open discussion amongst the members of the committee on this issue, on the issue before us, which is specifically to the qualifications of Representative Gamrit and Corser. We have two resolutions um, have, that have been referred to the committee for each of the members, one regarding censure, one regarding expulsion. Members, I think that it's clear to me through the evidence and through the testimony of the two representatives specifically that expulsion is a proper move for this chamber. I have um, it's a heartbreaking thing to to bring before you this whole sordid issue. But the disrepute that the House of Representatives has been brought into throughout this is without, is without debate. This issue is being talked about on national television shows that aren't even news shows, um, being talked about on sports shows and on comedy shows. This, this episode must be put behind us. Neither representative has, in my mind, convinced me that they will be able to regain the public trust, nor the trust of the members in the House. And I don't believe that they can continue to function without having that public trust, and I believe that it diminishes the public trust in the entire body to have them continue to be here. I would ask that you consider taking up the resolutions for expulsion, and I will recognize any member who wishes to discuss at this point.
Vice Chair Heisey. Mr. Chairman, um, this, uh, this is certainly not a, uh, a committee that we uh, enjoy serving on. Uh, this is a very serious and solemn uh, point in Michigan history. Uh, it is something which has brought uh, disrepute and uh, scandal upon this institution. And uh, I concur in your recommendations uh, for expulsion of both Gamrat and Representative Corser. This started um, with an affair between two sitting elected state representatives, which is frankly shocks the conscience and has brought our institution into disrepute. It then led to a cover-up. It then led to terminations. It then led to the use of state resources, admitted misuse of state resources to further a cover-up, to further political operations that were outside the scope of, of, their, of their role, to further a cause that they seem to believe in but certainly don't seem to practice and has dragged this institution into a, uh, a hole that we, we are obligated to get ourselves out of and do it quickly. I do not want to be coming back here next week to, to continue to deal with this problem. This has been a distraction. It's been a distraction in this town. Now, fortunately, Mr. Chairman, we can, we can chew, and, chew gum and walk at the same time, so it's not like we've been paralyzed here in Lansing. But um, this is clearly a distraction that has brought us into a, a, a very uh, dark place and a place that we need to uh, remove ourselves from as quickly as possible. Um, I think that the work that has been done by Mr. Schwartzel the accumulation of documents and evidence and tapes that we have had to review as part of this uh, investigation has been thorough, uh, has been very detailed, and has been, if not fully admitted, but at least largely admitted by both parties. Um, this, uh, this work has been uh, very admirable and has, on, on Mr. Schwartzel's part, uh, but has also cast a, a given a black eye uh, to this institution. Um, for those reasons, uh, for many others that I really don't need to get into but are very obvious to many of us, um, I would concur with your recommendation, Mr. Chairman, and uh, support both motions. Thank you, Vice Chair Heisey. Further discussion? Representative Liberati. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I, I do have to agree with, with both of you, uh, that this is a very, very serious matter that's in front of this committee here. Uh, we're charged with recommending to the full House of Representatives whether we should remove two sitting representatives. Um, that is, I believe, the highest power that we have as a House of Representatives, is to remove another sitting elected official. Um, so with that said, I, you know, I'm not ready at all to report out any bills. I, I believe that there is a, uh, more information to gather. And, and I just would like to point out the last whereas on each one of the resolutions. Whereas public trust and confidence in government are prerequisites to the functioning of a democratic, democratic society, now therefore be it. Well, the public trust and confidence, I think, was a little shaken when we were striking testimony of a relevant witness questions are ruled out of order, shut down, where some of us think they are relevant. I understand we were overruled. Um, and the biggest, the biggest is the, the subpoena. Um, the subpoena power, it is, it is granted us in the Constitution if we want to use it. Um, I, you know, I'm just looking for a little air of legitimacy in this, these proceedings. I, I, you know, with, with these three, let, let's just put it out there. If they want to, if they come, the, all the subpoena does is get get them in those seats. If they want to declare the fifth, then that's their opportunity. Now we have reason to believe how that came about is immaterial. We have reason to believe that one of those witnesses is willing to testify in front of this committee who is going to recommend to kick out two sitting representatives. I, I believe that, you know, let's just, 
Let's just do something proper, legitimate, due process. Let's get them in the chair. Let them say they're not going to testify. We have, we can get the authority. I'm sure the House will give it to us this afternoon. I, I, I don't see a problem with that. I, I, they'll give it to us. We don't have session um, next Tuesday, but we can reconvene this committee Wednesday and ask Mr. Keith Allard to be in that seat. And I, I think that's the least we can do. So I, I'm not, I, I can't pass, I can't support the resolution. And I urge my colleagues not to for that reason. It's a simple subpoena. Representative, the chair is extremely offended by your remarks to the press yesterday that I have participated or scripted these meetings. I'm and sorry, I, I, am, I did not say you did. They, they did seem scripted. I, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. They, if you accuse this committee of being scripted, you're accusing the chair of scripting the committee. And I want the committee to be transparent and diligent. I don't want it to drag out. Let's and the fact of the matter that I cannot gain the trust of this committee's body in its entirety to not run scripted meetings is hindering my ability to grant extensions of time because the continued politicization of this process is completely inappropriate. Our task in this committee is to determine the qualifications of two members, and I completely agree with you that it is the highest power that we have as sitting members. I do not take that lightly. Our task here is not to determine if there's other wrongdoing than is already before us in this report. If the report is sufficient to determine that the wrongdoing justifies expulsion, then we do not need to find and pile on additional wrongdoing. And if there is wrongdoing pointed to in the report that leads to other issues being brought forward, that is not the job of this committee to determine, and I have no doubt those issues will continue to be discussed and brought about in their own time and in their own way. I, I am imploring this committee this morning to consider the information that we've received, and most critical to that is that the two members in question have come forward and admitted one in entirety that the report is accurate, and another who, while he may contend certain aspects, are not entirely what he would term or how we put them in context, still admits to the wrongdoing, still admits to the blatant deception of the public, to the disdain for House processes and rules and procedures. I, Representative, I, we have a higher calling than to allow this to turn into anything but the narrow focus of the qualifications of these two members. And if you don't feel that the evidence in the report is good enough yet to justify expulsion, I, I, I'll have to apologize that you don't think so, but I am content that we have gotten there, and I have not received the trust that I need to believe that we should continue these proceedings any further. Okay, I, I do apologize again. You're right, if I criticize the committee, I'm criticizing the chair. Uh, but there were multiple things. Uh, the testimony of uh, uh, Mr. Sari just seemed so fast. We needed to slow down. The two letters from the representatives seemed awful and similar. I take, and I, you know, so I I'm did, not accusing anybody. And I did slow it down for you. And, and I appreciate press. it. And, and I will say, too, to clarify for everyone again, the precedent set in these types of proceedings is that if there is no testimony that is deemed relevant to the case that it be struck from the record. But nobody is under any illusion that there was not plenty of recordings of what Mr. Sari said yesterday, and that he said all those things under oath. So, and I did allow several of your questions to be answered by him too. So I, I don't, the, the issue at hand on the striking of the record was simply that that testimony was not relevant to this committee alone. Okay, let me, let me throw something out there and I'll, I'll end it. If my comments 
offended you, I do apologize. And I, and I, I, this out there. I don't know if it's, if it's in order, if it's proper, but if you will agree to bring up, to, to subpoena Keith Allard, I'll do a self-imposed media. I won't say a word to this, to this committee is done with its work, and I, I'll promise you that. If, that. if that's what it takes, because you're worried about the media out there and it becoming politicized, I'm with you. I will self-impose. I won't say a word to any of these. I will not re release a press statement, Facebook, nothing, until this is done. If we can get the witnesses there, if that's your concern, because I do believe they started the whole thing, we wouldn't be having this conversation if it wasn't for Keith Allard and Ben Graham. I, I, I don't know how, how we could argue that they're not relevant. They, yeah, they have statements in here, but let me hear him say that this is. Let, let me hear him, let, let's hear, you know, when you're on one and one, or you're here with these lights, they change. Representative, the, the, in my mind, the issue still remains, though, that yes, they were the genesis for why we are here today. However, the two members in question, the two accused, have come forward. If this were a court of law, which it is not, but if it were, that would be far sufficient testimony at that point for the court. And, and I encourage you to understand that it should be sufficient. I, Isn't there uh, a testimony about sentencing? I mean, we're basically discussing sentencing. I, I, I think there is. And, but, but, Back to my question, the court. whether I have to support the resolutions. Our job here on this committee is not just to determine whether Representative Corse or Representative Gamerin are unfit for office. Our, our responsibility here is to recommend to the full House. Now, we had caucus yesterday, and there are all kinds of questions. My caucus, my colleagues are not comfortable unless we get all of, the, all of it out. I, 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 there's been questions. I can't say it, colleagues, but or, I mean in caucus. They've come to me separately many times, many members, asking, what's up? And Representative, I'm in the same boat with my colleagues, and I would encourage you, my opinion, why you should support this resolution and encourage them to support it, is because the parties have, the accused have come in and said, yes, we did these things. We violated the public trust. We broke house rules. We abused our office. Uh, to me, I, I believe that's sufficient. Um, well, and and I'm, I'm not saying that you can't bring further points. This is a discussion, and, and I'll come back. But Representative Hewlin has been waiting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I'm, I'm, I'm really deeply disturbed by the, uh, this discussion. I think what is going to further erode the public trust uh, in this institution was what appears to be an effort to attack the chair, the committee, the process, and delay the resolution of this matter. Both representatives have agreed under oath and in written statements with the findings and conclusions of the House Business Report, namely that official misconduct and misuse of state resources occurred. Both representatives were represented by counsel and had the oppor opportunity to offer their own defense. Both representatives have agreed that the process and these proceedings were appropriate and fair. In fact, the last question to Representative Corser was mine whether these proceedings and the process was fair. His response, and I quote, was, quote, absolutely fair process, close quote. Our charge was to examine the qualifications and fitness to continue holding this high office. It was nothing more and it was nothing less. I believe that, Mr. Chairman, that the committee has done its job. The facts are clear. The general counsel uh, analogized to a criminal, uh, criminal matter, saying both parties have pled guilty and admitted the facts. They've, they, both parties have conceded that this has been a fair process, and I think those who agree that the process was flawed do not include the two with the most relevant concern, that is, the two representatives that we're examining. So whether the facts justify expulsion is a personal decision for each representative to make. However, to argue that the process is flawed or needs to be continued is simply a misdirection intended to delay and prolong this painful process, causing perhaps irreparable damage to the integrity uh, of the House of Representatives, and, and quite frankly, I'm offended by it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Representative. Further discussion amongst members? Vice Chair Churkin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my counterpart over here, Representative Liberati, he brings up a lot of uh, points. Um, what troubles me is the testimony from Ben Graham and Keith Allard. They came in 
they had a uh, conversation with uh, three or four people in the room. Uh, they weren't put under oath. They weren't given a Garrity ruling like they, some people do in uh, other public employment. And they, they told the story. Uh, Mr. Cotter and Ms. Gamrat came in. They took an oath and they said, yeah, we're guilty of this. Courser, I'm sorry. Um, Courser took an oath that um, what they're saying and testified to was true. And that's what my colleagues want to see done. They want Ben Graham and Keith Aller to come here, swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and then tell their story under questioning. Uh, I don't think that's too much to ask. This is a tribunal. We've asked repeatedly, and uh, you, did, you did take a vote under the rules, and I can appreciate that. But when, when it comes to uh, the two representatives, the threshold for expulsion is a little bit higher than censor. And I don't know what the, I mean, I know you have the two uh, resolutions for uh, expulsion on, and I don't know what you're going to do with the other two. But I, I'm just giving you uh, my take on it, and um, uh, I hope that my colleagues listen to what I have to say, because uh, as a, a, the caucus, uh, they need to know more facts. And uh, with that, I will close. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Representative. Uh, Vice Chair Heisen. Well, thank you very much. Uh, just to respond to that, uh, um, my colleagues and more importantly my constituents want us to get moving on the business of people of Michigan like roads and schools and energy policy and all the things that we were elected and sent here to do not to sit here and play uh, courtroom drama for another week with a bunch of irrelevant and uh, unnecessary. Uh, unnecessary witnesses so I say we get moving and uh, I think we've done a thorough job and uh, the uh, the painters are here, too. That's good. Uh, but we've done a thorough job that uh, even uh, Rep. Corser has said was fair. So uh, we, need to, we need to get on this. The committee will stand at ease at the call of the chair. Mr. Chair, a mentor of mine previously told me that we have a job to make the best decision we can with the current information we have. So in regards to this process being rushed, I would disagree with that because we have a job for to make a decision and to make that decision here as representatives. And something we as representatives battle every day is negative perception placed upon us by being politicians. And this very perception is formed by the disgusting and inappropriate behavior that was exhibited by these representatives. And it absolutely floors me. So we are public servants. We have a duty to protect the integrity of this institution and serve with honor, trust, and respect for our constituents. All of them. Not just those that voted for you. All of them. So I don't think it would be fair or appropriate to their constituents to censure, to censure them. But I do think it is completely fair inappropriate and I support the expulsion of both of these members and I thank the chair for the way he conducted this committee I think it was done very fairly and he has my full support thank you representative other discussion any further discussion members speak now or be silent <laughs> further from legal counsel.
committee members. I Hearing no further discussion or comment, the chair lays before the committee House Resolution Number 139, a resolution to expel Representative Todd Corser from the 82nd House District of the State of Michigan. I'll accept. I'll accept a motion to report the resolution. So moved. So moved by Representative Heisey. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. To report House Resolution 139, Chairman McBroom. Yes. Representative Heisey. Yes. Representative Verhulen. Yes. Representative LaFontaine. Yes. Representative Cherkin. Yes. Representative Liberati. Yes. Mr. Chair, you have four aye votes and two passes. The resolution is adopted. further discussion on the matter, the chair lays before the committee House Resolution 141, a resolution to expel Cindy Gamrat of the 80th House District, State of Michigan. Mr. Clerk, oh, I need a motion. Motion to report by Representative LaFontaine. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. To report House Resolution 141, Chairman McBroom. Yes. Representative Heisey. Yes. Representative Verhulen. Yes. Representative LaFontaine. Yes. Representative Cherkin. Yes. Representative Liberati. Yes. Mr. Chair, you have four aye votes and two passes. The resolution is adopted with recommendation. no further business before um, yes the chair recognizes vice chair Cherkin. Uh, yes I'd like to uh, make a motion to place on the table uh, house resolution 142 vice chair Cherkin moves to place on the table house resolution 142 before the committee house resolution 142 motion is in order mr. vice chair do you care to comment before I call for a vote. Uh, go ahead. At this time, I don't have any comments. No comment, Vice Chair Cherkin? Okay. I, I'm happy to call the roll, but I, I'll just say to the members, I would recommend not taking it up at this time. That Remember, the Constitution um, does not allow uh, this committee to deny the full House consideration of anything that's in front of a committee at any time. So um, I, I, I see no reason to take this up when we've just adopted the other two resolutions. Uh, Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. To place House Resolution 142 before the committee, Chairman McBroom. No. Representative Heisey. No. Representative Verhulen. No. Representative LaFontaine. No. Representative Cherkin. Yes. Representative Liberati. Pass. Mr. Chair, you have one aye vote, four nay votes, and one pass. The motion fails. Any further business before the committee? Seeing no further business, Vice Chair Heisey moves the committee adjourn.